In this video, I'm going to take you through DeFi Saver, the one-stop shop management app for DeFi. And I'll take you through what DeFi Saver is before taking you through a full walkthrough of the platform. For more information on DeFi Saver, please check out everybithelps.co.uk. DeFi Saver is an all-in-one management app for decentralized finance, supporting popular Ethereum-based apps, including the likes of Maker, Compound, Aave, and Reflexer. Launched in 2019, the protocol was originally named CDP Saver and has since expanded their services to other protocols and added additional tools and solutions for their users. DeFi Saver allows users to easily manage their DeFi portfolio with advanced features that are made simple. One of their best known features is their leverage management tools, allowing users to manage leverage positions where you can increase or pay back debt within a single transaction. However, you can also loan shift and use refinancing tools to move your positions to a completely different protocol or change your collateral or debt asset. There's a smart savings dashboard allowing users to switch protocols to get the best rates. And there's also a simulation tool where users can test out DeFi protocols without having to set up an account or spend anything in transaction costs. However, Automation is DeFi Saver's flagship product, essentially providing automatic leveraging and liquidation protection depending on market movements. And yet another great tool provided by DeFi Saver is the ability to track and get notified when gas fees are low using the DeFi Saver gas extension which is available as a browser extension for Chrome and Firefox. But let's jump into the walkthrough now of DeFi Saver. And the first thing that you'll need to do is head across to the site, which is DeFiSaver.com, and then head across to Go to App, where you'll then be prompted to connect up your wallet. With DeFi Saver, you can connect up a whole host of Web3 wallets, including the likes of Metamask, Ledger, Trezor, Argent, and Trust Wallet. Plus, users can also connect any wallet app that supports Wallet Connect. Now, I'm going to be connecting up my MetaMask wallet today, and you'll also need to have some Ethereum in here to pay for the gas fees. The first thing that you'll see once you've connected up your wallet is your portfolio. And we'll just take a look around the screen first. So here I have my connected wallet address and type. There's notifications that you can view from here. Any recent transactions plus the recommended gas fees. And as I said, they also have that browser extension available where you can track and get notified of gas fee changes. You then see your portfolio, which again displays your connected wallet address, your net worth, and a balance of your assets and any debt. And your balance is also broken down by specific tokens here as well. So then you have a breakdown by protocol. So here, as you can see, we've got MakerDAO, Compound, Aave version 1 and version 2, Reflexer, plus your smart savings account. And it will show you your ratio, collateral and debt positions from here, as well as if you have any automation set up, which is something that we're going to be looking at shortly. From the main screen, you can create CDPs or collateralized debt positions, which we're going to take a look at first. And this is using MakerDAO Vaults, allowing you to basically lock up your ETH and borrow DAI. So if you have some ETH, but you don't want to sell it to free up some funds, you can deposit it using it as collateral to borrow against. In this way, you'll still have your ETH, but you get to borrow in the meantime. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. But for the purposes of this tutorial, rather than using my own funds, I'll show you how to do this in simulation mode. And simulation mode basically offers a way for users to test out DeFi protocols and without having to set up an account or spend anything in terms of transaction costs. So if we head across to the top of the screen where my MetaMask wallet is currently connected, and from here, I'm going to choose simulation. And you'll get an account holding 100 ETH, which will appear like it's running on the Ethereum network. And all it's doing here is taking a copy of the Ethereum network and all your transactions will go onto that copy. As it states here, the current block will be frozen, so rates, prices, and other live data from the blockchain won't be updated until you exit the simulation. 
So now that we're in simulation, let's go ahead and create our CDP. As you can see, automatically ETHA is selected for you, but you can change your collateral type from the drop down list here. And I'll explain the differences between A, B, and C in a moment. But let's keep this as ETH A, as I currently have 100 ETH that I could essentially use for this loan. And I'm going to enter in the amount now, which is going to be 5 ETH. And when I do, the amount of debt will then display below. And this is the amount that I can borrow. But you can reduce this amount. However, be aware that with Maker, this must be over $5,000. Then over on the right hand side, it'll give you a summary. Showing your collateral, your exposure, which is currently at 1x. The amount of dye that you'll receive and the ratio which is currently showing in green. Now because cryptocurrency is so volatile, for every dollar that you borrow, you need at least 150% locked in as collateral. And if the price of ETH falls, and you then have less than 150%, the system will then start to sell off your ETH to pay off the debt. And this can obviously be quite risky. Therefore, if there's a bigger buffer between you and the 150%, it's then deemed as safe. And because of this, they recommend 200% as you can see here. And it gets riskier the lower the ratio falls. And it's showing the current maker ETH price. However, if it were to fall to the price below, then you can get liquidated. You'll also see the stability fee in here, which is essentially the fee that you're going to be paying for this service. And these fees do change, so it's worth keeping an eye on. Plus, it'll also show you the amount of dye that's currently available for borrowing. And I'll quickly just show you the differences between ETH A and ETH B, for example. So with ETH B, essentially the difference here is the liquidation ratio, which goes from 150 to 130. However, the minimum borrow amount is now at 15,000 DAI. Plus, you'll also need to pay higher fees here. You can also leverage, which will take your debt and essentially buys more ETH. And then it locks up the ETH in the same CDP. And with leverage, there are further fees to be aware of too, which are a 0.25% service fee. I'll go ahead and create my CDP now. And if you're in a live environment, you'll need to approve the transaction within your wallet and then confirm your transaction. And once that's completed, they then suggest enabling liquidation protection for your position using the CDP automation service, which you can do now or in the future but we're going to take a look at that in a moment. So for now, on the MakerDAO tab, we can see an overview of our CDP under the Manage tab. There's an Advanced tab for Boost, which is used for longing the likes of ETH, and users might use Boost when the market dips to benefit from potential recovery or when you believe the market will continue going up. And what Boost does is it generates more DAI, it swaps those DAI for the used collateral, and instantly adds those new funds to your MakerDAO vault, increasing your leverage and exposure to that asset. You can also repay, which can be very useful, in case of market drops when you need to make urgent actions to protect your vault from liquidation. And repay takes out lock collateral, swaps it for DAI, and uses the DAI to instantly pay off part of your debt, decreasing your debt and increasing the collateralization ratio. Then there's collateral, allowing you to add more ETH or to withdraw your ETH. Plus, you can generate or pay back DAI. But let's take a quick look at the automation at the top of the screen here. And as it states, this is beta, so do use this at your own risk. What automation does is it keeps your CDP at a certain ratio to protect it from liquidation, or it'll increase your leverage based on the market changes. It shows your CDP ID on the left-hand side of the screen and your current ratio on the right. Now this feature isn't enabled for simulation and they state here that due to high transaction fees, especially during significant market movements, automation is not recommended for small positions. And a minimum of 40,000 DAI is required to enable CDP automation. But once enabled, DeFi Saver will monitor your CDP ratio and automatically activate repay if CDP reaches the lower configured limit, or it'll boost if it reaches the upper one. And all you'd need to do is simply enter in your target ratio, or you can configure it manually. You can also manage Compound from within DeFi Saver, and we're going to take a look at that in a moment. Aave and Reflexer, 
However, I'm not going to have time to go into every single option in here today, but I do also have individual tutorials available for these protocols. Let's take a look at Smart Savings next. Smart Savings is a DeFi lending dashboard that supports several different protocols, allowing users to quickly move their funds between protocols in a single click. Smart Savings integrates with Compound, DYDX, DSR and Aave, which you can do from all in one place. And this enables you to track rates across these different applications and move them around for more favorable rates. However, for funds to be moved between these different protocols, each Smart Savings account has a smart contract wallet that is in control of your funds while you're supplying them with Smart Savings. Once you've supplied your funds to the protocol, if the interest rates do change and you want to change protocols, you can quickly move your funds across. So let's go ahead and create a smart wallet first and then start earning interest on our DAI. And when you're creating a wallet, you'll need to pay the gas fee again. Then once that's complete, you can supply DAI. However, as you can see, I don't currently have any DAI at the moment, but there is an exchange tab built into DeFi Saver that I can use for my swap. So let's head across to the exchange on the left hand side of the screen and I can then exchange. I'm going to be swapping one ETH for DAI, where it'll then show you the breakdown and the slippage tolerance. And they find the best prices sourced from 0x, Kyber, Uniswap and Oasis. And this price also includes a 0.125% service fee. We'll go ahead and exchange, pay our gas fee, and I should now have my DAI. So let's head back to our smart savings account and choose to supply 1,000 DAI with Aave. And I'll hit supply and accept the transaction. Now at the top of the screen, it shows you my total, which is my balance and my interest earned across all the protocols, as well as the interest that I'll earn in a week, a month and a year. And say for example, some time has passed and I saw that the rates were higher over on DYDX, which they are, well, I can simply move these across within one transaction. So if I go across to the Move tab, I can say that I want to move my savings from Aave to DYDX so that I can earn the higher rates there. And I then put in the amount that I'd like to move across. And as you can see at the top of the screen, it's showing my summary of what I'm currently doing. Then when I'm happy, I can choose to move, pay my gas fee, and my funds will now be over across on DYDX. Now at the moment, the fees here aren't really worth moving these across. And this is just an example of what you can do when hopefully the fees are lower. But this does save creating multiple transactions for withdrawing from one platform, interacting and depositing with another. So next, let's take a look at the loan shifter. And in here, you can shift your positions between protocols or you can change your collateral and debt assets. So you can shift your positions between different protocols or make a vault like from ETH A to ETH B. You can change your collateral asset to an asset with a lower stability fee or a higher supply APY. Or you can change your debt asset to a different one, for example, one with a lower borrow APY. And I'll just choose protocol for now to show you the options here. So I've got an ETH A loan with Maker at the moment and that's my from position. But I can create a new position to ETH B or C, which are on the same protocol, or I can choose to move this to compound. And it will then show you the complete breakdown here of the position you're moving from and to. Now this is less favorable and it's more risky, but it'll give you an idea of how you can move your positions. Plus the gas fees here again are very high, and this is due to the complexity of this transaction and the number of actions included in it, but I'm in simulation mode anyway. Then if I head across to Compound now, you'll see that that's now showing up here. Then finally, we're just gonna take a look at the Recipe Creator. Recipe Creator allows users to create complex transactions which will import multiple actions. And the whole idea of this is that it makes the likes of Flash Loans and DeFi Legos available for all, even for those that have less technical backgrounds. And there are some pre-made recipes in here, such as supply dye from Maker to Compound to earn both the lending interest and comp tokens. 
You can create positions to mine comp, tokenize, etc. And you can edit these existing recipes too. Or you can simply create your own. And for those that are less technical, Recipe Creator can be used to tell the interface what they want and then simply let the app prepare their recipe for them with the use of natural language processing. For example, a user could state that they want to borrow 100 die from Aave version 2 and then sell die for uni. And the app will then create those actions for you. Plus, it'll also come up with suggestions. In this example, asking if you want to transfer remaining recipe UNI balance back to your wallet at the end of the recipe. And it'll then create that as an action for you. Plus, it'll also tell you the final state after the recipe executes. This probably won't execute as the prices are fixed within the simulation mode here. And you can really go as technical as you want with this but I just wanted to show you with my limited technical background something basic that you can achieve. But that completes how you can use DeFi Saver. And I hope you enjoyed this video today. And if you did, then please give me a like, hit the subscribe button, and please do head over to my website at everybithelps.co.uk for more tips, reviews, and step-by-step -step guides. Thanks, and I'll see you soon.